Welcome back to the class on electrical vehicles and hybrid electrical vehicles. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the flywheels for the electrical vehicles and hybrid electrical vehicles. Initially, we are going to see what is meant by flywheel. Simple example. Flywheel is nothing but a disc which is rotating its own axis, which can able to store the energy in the form of kinetic energy. So everyone has seen this equipment, nothing but this manual showing machine. This is the main wheel, nothing but flywheel. This is a small wheel. This is pedal. This pedal is connected to the center of this main wheel through the crankshaft. The crankshaft is nothing but a, it is the equipment which converts the oscillatory motion into the rotating motion. Main wheel is connected to the small wheel of a sewing machine through the rope. So whenever we are applying the pressure on this pedal, the crankshaft will be rotating the main wheel so that it is linked with a upper small wheel through the rope so the upper wheel will be rotating there is some amount of work will be taking place at this point suppose if you are not applying any pressure at a pedal still the main wheel will be rotating for the some short time previously what is the kinetic energy stored in this main wheel that will be transferred to the small wheel so there is some amount of work will be taken place see in this example if you observe means this main wheel is nothing but a flying wheel as long as we are operating this pedal the main wheel will be storing the energy in the form of kinetic energy. If you are not applying any pressure on the pedal, due to the stored kinetic energy, that will be released to the small wheel at a upper level through the rope. So there is some amount of work will be done. Flywheel in a internal combustion. Suppose if we take the IC engine, here we have taken the four stroke engine. This is the chamber, cylindrical chamber, this is the piston, this is the inlet wall, this is the outlet wall, this is the spark plug, this is the crankshaft. The crankshaft is a one which is converting the oscillatory motion into the rotating motion. See here, this is the water, these are the water jockets along the cylinder. Because during the power stroke, there is a large amount of heat will be dissipated in this power stroke. To extract that heat, we are keeping the water jockets. This is the flywheel. Here we are adding a flywheel to the crankshaft to supply the energy to the piston to move from downward direction to the upward direction so that it can reduce the power fluctuations in a IC engine. Now we are going to see the four stroke operation of a IC engine. TDS is nothing but a top dead center, BDS is nothing but a bottom dead center. During the first stroke, nothing but a suction stroke. Exhaust valve is closed, inlet valve is open. So, from the inlet valve, the fuel along with the air will be entering into the cylinder. The piston will be moving from the TDS to the BDS. In this duration, the crankshaft will be moved from 0 degree to the 180 degree. Flywheel will, will be accelerated. In second stroke, nothing but compression stroke. In this stroke, now the crankshaft will be moved upwards the piston. In this duration, the flywheel will be giving a some amount of energy to the piston to move from the BDC to the TDC. Both valves are closed. Air along with the fuel mixture will be compressed in this chamber. So high pressure will be developed. Whenever the piston is reached near to the TDS, the spark plug will be giving a spark to the fuel mixture. Whenever the spark plug is giving a spark to the fuel mixture, the combustion will be taken place because of the combustion high flue gases will be generated in this stroke the crankshaft will be completing the 180 degrees to the 360 degrees in this interval the flywheel is releasing a power to the piston third stroke in the third stroke nothing but a power stroke once the ignition is started here high temperature high pressure gases will be generated here because of that high temperature and high pressure gases, the piston will be moving from the TDS to the BDC, again from the top to the bottom, with a high power, so that the flywheel will be moving very fast. Whenever the piston is reaching the BDS, now the crankshaft will be completing the 360 to the 540 degree. Fourth stroke, exhaust stroke. In this exhaust stroke, again the piston will be moving from the BDC to the TDS upward direction. So there is some amount of flue glasses will be occupied by the cylinder that we have to send to the atmosphere outside. In this interval, exhaust valve is open whereas the inlet valve is closed. So when the piston is moving upward direction, 
through the exhaust valve this flue ga gases will be go outside in this interval the crankshaft will be com completes from 540 to the 720 degrees in this interval also the flywheel is giving energy to the piston through the crankshaft so that it will be moving upward direction in this manner when the piston is moving downward direction to the upward direction the flywheel is giving energy to the piston through the crankshaft so that it will be more upward when the piston is moving from the tdc to the bdc nothing but from up to the bottom there is a kinetic energy will be stored in the flywheel in this manner the flywheel is used to balance the power given to the four stroke ic engine so we can say very easily that when the crankshaft is completing the two cycles it gives the four stroke operation now how we are going to use the flywheels in evs the main advantage of the flywheel is the high specific power so that we can use the flywheel to get the power in a regenerative braking operation of a motor which is placed in a heavy so one more important role of the flywheel is that you can use the flywheel to charge the battery also this is the wheel one this is the wheel two this is the differential this is a motor this is the shaft which is connected to the differential now here we kept a one gear box this is the gear this gear box is connected to the shaft on the shaft the flywheel is there another end, end of the shaft is connected to the motor or the generator this is the powertronic circuit when the generator is generating a power that will be converted into the suitable power so that it will be charged the battery and again it is given to the vehicle motor so this by means of the gear box and transmission system click match the the speed of a vehicle to the speed of a flywheel the main advantage of the flywheel is that they have a high specific power it is relatively easy to get the power and also we can give the power to the flywheel very simple construction and mechanical construction but it has a low specific energy the kinetic energy of a spinning disc is released when the flywheel slows down suppose when the vehicle is going in a downwards by the time the speed of the vehicle will be increases because of gravitational force the wheels will be rotating once the wheel is rotating that energy will be transferred to the flywheel on the flywheel we are connecting the generator so the voltage will be generated if we are using that voltage to charge the battery indirectly we are saying that we can we are going to apply the braking to the electric vehicle nothing but a regenerative braking suitable powertronic circuit is required to match the voltage generated by the generator to the driven motor this is the practical uh, flywheel this is the rear drive shaft here one wheel is there here another wheel is there this is another much the differential at the differential it is connected to the some mechanism to the flywheel the flywheel which is placed in the chamber so why we are keeping the flywheel in a chamber means to reduce the friction losses when it is rotating there is some amount of friction loss will be occurs to reduce the friction losses we are keeping the flywheel in a vac chamber one more important point here is that the flywheel is supported by the bearings whenever you are using the bearings there is some amount of friction loss will be occurs in a bearing if you want to reduce that friction losses then we have to go for the magnetic levitation for the flywheel so we can reduce the bearing losses also but now the research is going on the magnetic levitation the flywheel is connected to the vehicle wheel via gear box and clutch the transmission matches the rotational speed of a flywheel to the wheel the flywheel is giving output energy as at a deceleration whether the mechanical or electrical system can also be used to recover the kinetic energy during the braking the flywheel can accelerate turning the kinetic energy of vehicle into the stored kinetic energy in the flywheel acting as a highly efficient regenerative braking the total amount of energy stored is given by e equal to 0.5 i omega square where i is nothing but a moment of inertia of a wheel where omega is nothing but a angular velocity of a wheel we can increase the moment of inertia of a body or flywheel we can increase the size as well as the mass omega is nothing but a angular velocity so by changing this inertia as well as omega we can increase the amount of energy stored in the flywheel that we can recover when it is required but here we can't run the flywheel to infinity because if we run at a very high speeds tension force developed in a flywheel 
it may burst as like a bomb in a baking. Suppose the flywheel speed is changing from a omega 1 to omega 2 radians per second, then the energy released by the flywheel that is equal to delta E equal to 0 0.5 into I into omega 1 square minus omega 2 square. See, in this manner, we can use the flywheel to recover the power from the wheels of a vehicle, regenerative braking effectively. The main advantage of flywheel is that it has a high specific power. One more thing is that suppose if the vehicle is going upwards, by the time also the engine requires a high amount of power, not only from the battery, you can grab that power from the flywheel. These are the different advantages where we are using the flywheels in EVs as well as HEVs. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my YouTube channel so that I am always welcome to answer all your questions.